The best architects, in my view, are the ones who bring a coherent view of the world to design. Those are the folks that become the best architects in the sense that they're the ones that progress the profession, innovate, create new ideas. The most important thing about being an architect is learning how to think clearly. You have to be able to think clearly to practice architecture. There's a tendency to see people as singular. If you're artistic, you're not practical. If you're practical, you're not artistic. That, that, that's totally preposterous. I mean, architecture is embedded in both worlds. And if anything, architecture is the um, connective tissue between these two kind of spheres. And it'd be impossible to live in one or the other. One, you'd be practical and never produce a piece of work of any interest. The other, you'd be producing work that has no meaning or no connectivity. I think d design requires a certain kind of smartness that holds those schizophrenic views simultaneously uh, in, in one's thinking. Even as a young person, you, you know whether you can do that. And, and as you mature, it's quite rewarding to have those, those opposing views in your mind at all, at all times. There's not just one role for an architect. There are all different kinds of contributions an architect can make in, in, in the culture. The question of what's a good architect, I think that there are many different perspectives that come at a project as it's developing. And what's important for the architect is to be able to listen to people outside of themselves and take that and then give something of themselves to a project and make something incredibly unique and wonderful. It has to be a person who's who's really willing to learn in a way that architects need to learn, which is they need to learn something every day for the rest of their lives. You've got to be, in a sense, uh, kind of driven by that, in a sense, kind of inner force. But I think you, always, you, you, you also have to have the ability to kind of work through something and to be able to look at particular problems and be able to kind of listen and learn and examine with, with great patience some of those questions. So again, it's a kind of left brain, right brain kind of dichotomy that is, you know, constantly, those demands are constantly placed on you as an architect. There are other disciplines that bring other things to the table, but I think our ability to envision or imagine something that is not there it, it's almost spooky to people. They, 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 this notion that you can look at a site or look at a parking lot and see a building there, I think it's, it's, extraordinary, it's an extraordinary skill. And we are one of the few disciplines that can do that. I would not trade for anything the skill set that I learned in school, because uh, it's very, very, very unique um, to our discipline. And that's what we bring to the table. I don't believe schools of architecture, either historically or today, have particularly prepared young architects for the realities of architectural practice. Again, referring to this notion of a safe space where one can fail, where one can push the envelope in a sense. I think the academy always needs to be that. In a certain sense, you're a bit freer of the constraints of the real world. We need to understand that those constraints also have to be brought into the academy so students can begin dealing with them and dealing with them in an inventive and creative way. I think the academy should be a kind of idealized space, but it also has to be a kind of laboratory, a testing ground for the real world. And I don't think we're so good with the latter. I mean, we are still that ivory tower. Sometimes I think we lose a little bit of the reality of what our job is and what our profession is really about. I think people really forget the reality of what it's going to be like to be working as professionals. Architecture school is really unique because it's probably the only time that many of architecture students get to work on their own projects because after that it's, you know, it's, architecture is basically a service industry. I think that the profession is a lot different from the education in that you never work alone. It's hard to design an entire building by yourself. There's always other people that you have to network with or design with or consult. That collaboration is not usually present in school, which is a good thing and a bad thing because during school you're trying to develop your own sort of way of working. Uh, very fast. 
and you only pre predicting what I'm going to say. Their education is not preparing them to be com kind of architects in the full sense of the word architect, being both poets and practitioners. They are wonderful, they're talented, they're smart. The tragedy is that the students are not sufficiently prepared to be independent thinkers. If they either function at a poetic level or they function at a, at a pragmatic level. The two shall never meet. So we have to kind of help them put those two together. You do like a series of overlays where you'd start to see like if there's different spaces like this, how they would interact. So the walls are, re they're retaining walls. They're retaining earth, they're retaining memories. It's like an earthwork, yeah. But like if you, if you give me a word like that, we can all, we can respond to it, right? Let me ask you, why are they working just to put these things? They're making things, yeah. right? And they're making things because they want to create something of value, right? Mm -hmm. Why do they just want to put it in storage? Do I think I might not be an architect? Sure. The likelihood that I work in an office after I graduate is pretty high though. I don't think that people have to be stuck there for like three years and then get their license and then they do their own stuff. I want to start doing my own stuff and work in an office. I look forward to... I look forward to seeing what's going to happen. I'm excited to see what my signature ends up being. I want to teach and I want to write and I want to work for a firm that will let me do all of these things. I want to get some experience in a, uh, in a larger firm to see how they work and see how they operate. Do that and then hopefully the long-term goal is to, you know, start my own practice. The remarkable thing to me is how optimistic um, students of architecture are, um, how they sustain that optimism. Um, and again, it's almost a bit like an actor or actress that they, they still cherish that belief that they're going to break out of the chorus line in some way, even though the reality, um, as it is on Broadway, is very, very different. In part, it could be how they very quickly imbibe this notion of the star architect and this belief that against all odds that they might be able to make it. Well, today I think a lot of people, when they think of architecture, they think of what star architects, they think of well, the handful of brand name architects that they might have heard of, which to me is, is rather limiting. People only know Frank Gehry, you know. I mean, there's other architects out there, out there that are doing better work, greater work, more important work than Gehry. The problem is that the way we teach architecture right now is we, teach, we, tr we sort of train everybody to do that exact same thing. The, the whole sort of pedagogical model right now is around creating the next generation of star architects. That's actually a flawed model. For many years, everyone wanted to be like Frank Gehry. They wanted to create great sculptures in the landscape. Whether those sculptures worked or not was largely irrelevant. The ability to use aerospace engineering to come up with forms that hadn't been built before was considered to be a primary task of someone coming out of school. That's over. That's over. I would argue that this current generation of uh, beginning students of architecture have the capacity to reshape a world like we've never seen before. And, it, and they need to have access to as much technology and as much discourse, meaningful discourse, surrounding these techniques and these tools so that they're fully prepared to go out into the world in the future to do something positive and productive. Students are coming out, they're working with individuals around the world who need shelter and who need ways of living that are affordable and supportable and sustainable. The students themselves have been pushing to force faculty to think differently about the way faculty see the environment, use the environment, and create objects that serve not just the aesthetic interests of the architect. It's fundamentally an optimistic profession. Um, you don't go into architecture if you're a pessimist, if you don't actually believe that uh, the world can get better. So I think you've got a bunch of optimists 
they go into this design profession who actually believe that their buildings are going to make the difference in somebody's life. I think that the built environment is something that people have such an appreciation for. If you don't care about this, then like, what do you care about? It's about understanding human behavior, human desire, human want. The architecture is what you experience in your daily life on the street, the space of the street, how you navigate the street, how you relate to the buildings around you. People tend to think architecture is done for and by other people. It's, you know, it's also done by you if you decide to maybe put a new window in your house or change the, the traffic flow in your house or your office. In architecture school, you got the freedom to, you don't like something, do something about it. That's what they told you for five years. Do something about it. Doesn't matter what, just do something about it. The school is kind of about a way of thinking, and what you're going to do in architecture school is not what you think it's going to be, you know? That you're not going to go in there and, and you know, be designing uh, colonial homes and things like that. We don't just need shelter, we need atmosphere, and we need to be inspired. I think one of the most important things you can take from this school is not to lose your ambition. It's not just, you know, four walls and a roof. There's, there's more into it. There's like a life to it that I think we get here and um, we should really take with us and everywhere you go. You're gonna come to architecture school. I hope, I hope you understand the creative process. I, I hope you understand the transformation that your mind and body and psyches is gonna go through because there is nothing absolute about this.